the South China Sea, two Chinese fighter jets were observed orbiting a Philippine aircraft involved in joint patrols with Australia. Despite the monitoring, no untoward incident occurred. The Philippines and Australia conducted sea and air exercises in the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone, following similar patrols with the U.S. amid concerns about China's assertiveness in the region. China claims a significant portion of the South China Sea, contested by several nations, with a 2016 ruling stating China's claims lack legal basis. The Philippines is intensifying efforts against what it perceives as China's aggressive activities in the South China Sea. China accused the Philippines of involving foreign forces. While the Philippines asserted its right to conduct joint patrols with allies to uphold the rule-based international order, the joint drills involved Philippine Navy vessels and surveillance aircraft, along with Australia's frigate Toowoomba and P-8, a maritime surveillance aircraft. Japan's Prime Minister, Fumio Kishida, has expressed a commitment to intensify efforts to arrange a meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The Japanese government is actively lobbying through various channels to bring about this meeting with the aim of changing the current state of affairs and establishing positive relations. Kishida made this statement during a gathering in Tokyo focused on the issue of North Korean abductions. Japan officially recognizes 17 of its citizens as having been kidnapped by North Korea in the late 1970s and early 1980s, with five of them being released in 2002. The foreign ministers of China, Japan, and South Korea have agreed to restart cooperation and work towards a trilateral summit of their leaders in an effort to ease tensions in the region. The three nations had initially agreed on annual summits in 2008, but disputes and the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted the plan, with the leaders' last meeting in 2019. The ministers, meeting for the first time since 2019, discussed advancing cooperation in areas such as security, economy, and technology. While a specific timeframe for the trilateral summit was not mentioned, it is expected to occur in the near future. The ministers also condemned North Korea's recent satellite launch. Despite the cooperative tone, there were tensions, with Japan expressing regret over a South Korean court's compensation order related to wartime issues and China warning against politicizing economic and technology matters. The overall goal is to promote stability and cooperation in the region amid concerns about the strengthening partnership between the United States and its allies. The Chinese military has accused the U.S. naval destroyer USS Hopper of entering China's territorial waters without approval. In response, China's military deployed naval and air forces to track, monitor, and warn away the vessel, stating that the incident demonstrates the U.S. as a security risk creator in the South China Sea. This development follows China's recent accusation against the Philippines of involving foreign forces in patrolling the South China Sea, referring to joint patrols with the U.S. The U.S. and China had engaged in talks earlier this month on maritime issues, including the contested South China Sea, where the U.S. expressed concerns about what it deemed dangerous and unlawful Chinese actions in the region. China and the United States engaged in a dispute over the South China Sea after China's military claimed to have driven away a U.S. warship from the region. China deployed naval and air forces to track, monitor, and warn away the U.S. destroyer, according to an official statement. The U.S. Navy asserted that the warship was conducting a routine freedom of navigation operation near the Paracel Islands, consistent with international law. China's territorial claims over almost the entire South China Sea, contested by neighboring nations, have been deemed without legal basis by the Permanent Court of Arbitration. Tensions escalated as joint sea and air patrols by the Philippines and Australia began. Following China's accusation that the Philippines enlisted foreign forces for South China Sea patrols. The incident prompted China to label the U.S. as a security risk creator in the South China Sea. The U.S. reiterated its commitment to challenging excessive maritime claims worldwide, emphasizing the threat that unlawful claims in the South China Sea pose to freedom of the seas. Earlier talks between the U.S. and China on maritime issues included concerns about dangerous and unlawful Chinese actions in the contested region. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will attend a NATO foreign minister's meeting next week to underscore the alliance's commitment to Ukraine in its conflict with Russia, according to the State Department. While NATO supports Ukraine, it is not directly at war with Russia, a scenario Western leaders aim to avoid due to Moscow's significant nuclear arsenal. Blinken will also emphasize U.S. backing for democracy and regional stability in the Western Balkans. 
NATO is considering a more permanent increase in troop numbers in the region to manage tensions. The meeting is scheduled to occur from November 27th to 29th in Brussels. NATO has increased its peacekeeping presence in Kosovo, with British troops patrolling the Kosovo-Serbia border amid concerns of potential conflict. The reinforcement follows a violent clash in September between authorities and armed Serbs in northern Kosovo. Kosovo accused Serbia of supporting the gunmen, a claim denied by Belgrade. NATO has deployed an additional 1,000 troops, bringing the total to 4,500 peacekeepers from 27 countries. British soldiers are conducting patrols to prevent the entry of weapons or armed groups into Kosovo. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg mentioned a review for a potential permanent troop increase to prevent escalating violence. Kosovo, with an ethnic Albanian majority. Declared independence from Serbia in 2008, but ethnic Serbs, constituting around 5% of the population, particularly in the north, refused to recognize it. The recent tensions involve issues such as vehicle registration, with Kosovo setting a December 1 deadline for ethnic Serbs to register their cars with Kosovo numbers or face penalties. Russia reportedly offered to halt its invasion of Ukraine in spring 2022 if Ukraine abandoned its NATO aspirations and took a neutral stance. The peace talks, occurring during the early stages of the war in Belarus and Turkey, involved a proposed resolution by Russia. The condition for peace included Ukraine making a constitutional change to adopt neutrality, a shift from its current commitment to NATO membership. Ukrainian leaders expressed a lack of trust in Russia's sincerity and highlighted the need for security guarantees to prevent vulnerability to a potential second incursion. Former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson advised Ukraine against signing any agreement with Russia during his visit to Kiev, encouraging them to continue the fight. Talks between Ukrainian President Zelensky and Russian President Putin were halted when Russian troops withdrew from Kiev, revealing war crimes such as the Bucha massacre. NATO expansion continued during the conflict, with Finland joining the alliance in April. The report suggests that Putin's decision to invade Ukraine backfired, uniting NATO in support of Ukraine. However, there is reluctance to grant Ukrainian membership while the country is at war, with the US opposing immediate NATO expansion to avoid escalating tensions with Russia. A group of EU countries is reportedly seeking to weaken proposed measures by the European Union EU, aimed at preventing the circumvention of sanctions against Russia through third countries. The European Commission had proposed prohibiting importers from reselling certain goods, particularly semiconductors used in Russia's weapon production, and suggested placing a specified amount in a special deposit account to comply with these requirements. In case of violations, at least half of this amount would be transferred to a trust fund for Ukraine, and contracts terminated. However, diplomats from major EU member states have raised concerns about the proposals, including questions about their legality and the potential competitive disadvantage for European companies. The dissenting countries aim to narrow the scope of the rules and reduce the list of goods to which the laws will apply. Some member states, including the Baltic states, support the proposed measures. The background includes the recent presentation of a 12th package of sanctions against Russia by the EU, targeting individuals and entities undermining Ukraine's sovereignty. Additionally, the EU is considering instructing Denmark to check and potentially block tankers carrying Russian oil passing through its waters to address attempts to circumvent pricing controls. Russia has reportedly placed Meta Platform spokesperson, Andy Stone, on a wanted list for unspecified charges. The Russian Interior Ministry has initiated a criminal investigation against Stone, but details of the charges have not been disclosed. The move comes after Russia banned Meta's main social platforms, Facebook and Instagram, following Moscow's invasion of Ukraine in February of the previous year. In March 2022, the Russian Investigative Committee mentioned Stone in a criminal investigation, accusing Meta's employees of illegal actions and stating that Stone had lifted a ban on calls for violence against the Russian military on Meta's platforms, allegedly inciting extremist activity. Meta's press office has not yet responded to requests for comment. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has highlighted the need for increased air defenses to protect Ukraine's grain export routes and regions bordering Russia. Speaking at an international summit on food security in Kiev, Zelensky mentioned the shortage of air defense, especially after Russia's recent drone attack. He stated that foreign partners would supply vessels to accompany cargo convoys from Ukrainian ports to enhance security. 
European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen pledged 50 million euros for infrastructure repairs in Ukrainian ports. Zelensky expressed hope to address the air defense shortage through new supplies from partners and increase domestic production capacity. Ukraine, a major grain exporter, has faced challenges in grain shipments since Russia withdrew from a UN-brokered deal in July. Zelensky also attributed recent cargo supply disruptions to protests by Polish and Slovak truckers, linking the issue to the internal politics of those countries. Iran has unveiled a new hypersonic missile called the Fada-2, claiming it can fly 15 times faster than the speed of sound and evade Israeli air defenses. The missile is equipped with a hypersonic glide vehicle that detaches from the missile, making sharp maneuvers to avoid traditional missile defenses and traveling at hypersonic speed to its target. Iran asserts that the missile has a range of 869 miles, 1,400 kilometers, and plans to increase this range to 1,242 miles, 2,000 kilometers. The US and Israel have not officially responded to the development, but the Pentagon has expressed skepticism about Iran's hypersonic claims. Iran's elite Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps has previously stated its intent to expand the range of hypersonic missiles.